Again, we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the Word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> now, we've had a demonstration this morning of what it means, things we've said before, to have just have one person come into our midst. How can lift the service? Now, weren't you lifted and blessed just to see Pastor Dave on this platform? I think everybody in here, if you saw him, you looked this way, you got lifted, just one person, and to see the Anderson family and Sister Polly and these dear ones, it lifted us. So if you'll come and just put a smile on your face, you'll lift somebody. You may not know it, but somebody will be lifted just by your being here and smiling at them. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, I want us to turn to the book of Romans. The 15th chapter, and uh, starting with the 5th verse, Romans 15, starting with verse 5. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive you one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, for this cause I will confess thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again he saith, saith, There shall be a root out of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall all the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that ye may bound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I'm glad that chapter's in there. It got us Gentiles in there real good. <laughs> and I'm thankful for it. Well, I look at this message this morning, and it makes me think of a sermon I heard Dr. Tozer preach years ago. Uh, he preached a sermon on wisdom from the 28th chapter of Job. Where is wisdom to be found? And he went on there, and I was, I remember, I was so excited. I sat, as it were, on the edge of my seat listening as different places said, it's not in me, it's the depth, it's not in me, and uh, you can't buy it with gold. And I went on, and finally... He gave the answer. He said, where is wisdom to be found? And then he shocked me by saying this. He said, the answer is too simple. You won't remember it. You won't get it. It's too simple. Now, isn't that the way with so many things? The, the, sometimes the tremendous truths are so simple that we don't get them. Because the answer, that where is wisdom to be found? The answer is just simply the fear of the Lord. That's wisdom. It's, it's too simple, isn't it? Yeah, it's too simple. Wisdom. You want wisdom? Here it is. Fear the Lord and you have wisdom. But it's too simple. And I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I really wondered about this message this morning and the thought came to mind, Lord, it's, it's too simple. Uh, and I really tried to think of something else to preach because I was afraid you wouldn't get those too simple. I didn't think you'd get it. It's too simple. Because the simple things we think we already know, we bypass them, we let them go, and we don't really try to get a hold of them. And uh, you, you notice here what it says, now the God of patience and consolation, or the God of patience and encouragement. Isn't that, uh, well, that's too simple. Haven't we heard that before? Uh, but what... Yes, sir. You'd be an encouragement yes, to somebody. Yes, sir. That's true. The that, right there alone was yeah. enough that we could all just go on back home. Yeah, that's true. The, the simple things we often miss. 
and are very, very important. Notice what it says here, the God of patience or and consolation or encouragement. This is telling us what God is like. And then he says that you might be the same way. He's telling what God is like, so you'll be like it. And if you'll be like it, then we can be like one like-minded or we can come to oneness of mind that we may glorify God. And many times here's the road to oneness in such simplicity we often miss it. And that is to be patient and encourage one another. And we, we, this is the road to oneness. To be patient with one another, why? God's that way, and that we ought to be the same way as God. We ought to be patient with one another and encourage one another so that we can come to oneness of mind to glorify God. It's too simple, isn't it? Where often we want some profound thought. When we come to the house of God, we often want something, we want to hear something profound now. When the greatness is in the simple things that we miss. I thought here of Abraham. Uh, when God called Abraham to go with him, do you know that Abraham really didn't know much about God? He knew that God was El Shaddai or God Almighty and he obeyed him and went with him. He didn't know much about God. Don't you use Abraham as an example. He didn't know much about God. I heard of a man down in the West Indies who had several wives. He said, well, Abraham had several. Don't you use Abraham as an example. He didn't know much about God. No, he didn't. He obeyed him, and that's the marvelous thing. As we look to Abraham, he was a man who obeyed God. And I marvel that he obeyed God and knew so little about him. Do you know that he didn't have a Bible? He never heard a sermon. He never had the privilege of hearing a song sung. That we have these marvelous songs sung week after week. I want you to, he, he obeyed God uh, with such a little understanding of God. But and look at all that we know about God. Do you know that we have had thousands, we're reaping the results of thousands of years of revelation about God? We've had thousands of years of revelation about him. Abraham never had it. And the privilege of coming week after week, hearing these marvelously inspired songs. Abraham never heard a song. I don't know that he ever heard a song in his life. Oh, where should we be with the revelations we've had about God? So... But Abraham obeyed God on just knowing that he was God Almighty. And revelations began to come as he began to walk with God. The revelations got greater. And uh, different ones, there were different revelations. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, the Lord will provide. I am the Lord that healeth thee. All these were added revelations later. He didn't know God was like that. As someone, I think it was said that every name that's been revealed to us about God is a name that relates to our need. God has continued. Men come, men, uh, come up against the need and there's a revelation that God is there to meet that need. He's a God that meets that need. Whatever your need is this morning, I want you to know that there's a revelation, can, if you know it, there's a revelation about God that will meet that need. But Abraham never had any revelation like that. So all of these needs that we are, all of these names about God uh, reveal some need and that God will supply some need. So here we find a revelation of God. God is a God of patience. Aren't you glad he's a God of patience? If he hadn't, a brother, he'd have been done with me long ago. And there's a revelation to say, Bob, wait a minute. God's a God of patience. Now he's not impatient with you. You may get impatient with yourself, but I want you to know God's never impatient with you. I think that's a wonderful revelation from God. 
to know that no matter where I go, how I stray, whatever I may do, that God's never impatient with me. He's a God of encourage, consolation or encouragement. He's, he never buffets us. He's always encouraging us. He's a God of hope and a God of love. And he says that God may grant you that you'll be this way with one another. Every revelation you see in God, and God wants you to have that revelation to somebody else. He wants it carried on to somebody else. And if we can be that way with God and with each other, then we can come to oneness and uh, glorify God. Have patience with one another. Uh, isn't that wonderful? Look, God is a God of patience and consolation, so we ought to be that way with one another. And then seventh verse, so he says, then why, why don't you accept one another? Now, you want a real something profound? This isn't profound. It's simple. But let's, I'm trusting God will help us to get a hold of it. God is a God of patience with you and encouragement with you. You ought to be that way with one another. Therefore, accept one another. Why do you pick out their faults and, and, and uh, failures and talk about them? Why don't you instead encourage them? If you'll encourage them instead of talk about them, we can come to oneness. So, the God of patience and encouragement. Is there anyone here that doesn't have any faults? Uh, if there is, I'd like to see you stand up. I'd like to look at you. Well, the Bible tells us that God accepts them, then he wants us to accept them where they are and encourage them. So, as Christ accepted us, therefore, let us accept each other. So you want to bring, this This brings praise to God. You want to praise God? People say, well, I'll tell you, it's just hard for me to stand up and say praise the Lord. Well, then encourage somebody, and you'll, and you'll bring praise to God. The Bible says you'll bring praise to God. To encourage somebody, you'll bring praise to Him. That's one way to praise God. Encourage somebody, smile at them, and have patience with them. You'll be bringing praise to God. You can praise Him that way. If you can't get your mouth open, you can at least encourage somebody. So because God is patient with you, then you ought to be patient with somebody else. And this will bring us to oneness, and, and it will help the Gentiles, as it were, to praise God for his mercy. So the beautiful music that we hear among us is marvelous. And that makes me think of the sermon your pastors preached on and others of Hebrews that when we, this oneness that we feel causes Jesus to come down and sing in the church. And that's what, that's really what we're hearing. The beauty, there's no voice, as George, what is it, George Watson said, there's no voice so beautiful in all the universe as the voice of Jesus. What do you think we're hearing in this choir? People say, I'm hearing something, I don't know what I'm hearing. It's the voice of Jesus blended in with that choir and say, isn't that marvelous? And people saying, like the fellow was in Germany or someplace, what is this I'm hearing? He never heard it before. He heard beautiful choirs. But Jesus says, comes down and sings among his people. And we're hearing his voice. He's joining in with us. I'm thankful for it. Romans 5, 15, the God of consolation, the God of encouragement. He wants us to get a hold of this. The Bible brings that out so beautifully. In the book of Acts, there was a man named Joseph. Do you know who he was? Well, he was such a man of encouragement, the disciples changed his name to Barnabas. And you know he was Barnabas. Barnabas wasn't his name. But everybody called him that, son of encouragement. Everybody called him Barnabas, Barnabas, Barnabas. Why? That wasn't his name. His name was Joseph. I think that's marvelous. They just picked it up. They said, this brother is going around encouraging people so much, we'll just call him son of encouragement. And God said that would bring praise and glory to God. And it has all down through the centuries. I'm even preaching about him this morning because there was a man that encouraged people. Thank you, Lord. I'm preaching about an encourager. Oh, I'm so thankful for Barnabas. I'm glad he was in there. 
It says here in the book of Acts, I don't know if I can turn back and read that. I think it's in the ninth chapter where Saul got saved. And uh, he had been such a persecutor of the church in the ninth chapter of Acts. And uh, it says that he came to Jerusalem. He came to Jerusalem and tried to join himself with the disciples, but they were afraid of him. It says, but Barnabas. He got a hold of him and, and he brought him to the disciples. He saw something in, everybody else was afraid of him, but Barnabas, this son of encouragement, he got a hold of him. I wonder if the whole story would have been different if Barnabas hadn't have been there to bring him to the disciples. Makes me think of dear uh, Christy Rhodes wrote a little, one of her writings so beautiful on but Barnabas. So she used it, however, Barnabas. And that we ought to be a however Barnabas. It ought to be in our life. Uh, there may be others that are discouragers, but however Barnabas. But Barnabas got a hold of him and brought him to the disciples. They were afraid of him. Barnabas, it says, sold lands and brought the money to the apostles' feet. When there was a revival broke out in Antioch, they sent Barnabas up there. I'm so glad they did. They probably thought, well, we send this young fellow up there. Oh, I'm glad they did. He wasn't a legalist. And here were the Gentiles having revival, and he went up there, and they didn't think the Gentiles ought to get saved, but when he got up there, he liked what he saw. Barnabas did. And then not only did he like what he saw, he was so excited about it, he went in search of Paul, or Saul at that time. So he went and hunt, hunted him up. I'm, you know, isn't it strange that he didn't go back down to Jerusalem and get some of the saints that established down there, but got this new convert and said, Paul, come up here and help us. He was an encourager to go out to those that needed encouragement. So they got, he went down and got Paul. But Barnabas, he was happy with what he saw. Barnabas went seeking for this dear man. And I marvel that he didn't go back to Jerusalem. They stayed there for about a year uh, and then went on evangelistic journeys. Uh, there's another beautiful thing about Barnabas. Later on, he picked up a young man that failed. Isn't that something? He failed. Uh, on a missionary journey with Paul. And he turned back. He couldn't make it. He got discouraged. And he failed. And Paul didn't want to take him along. He says, but Barnabas got a hold of him. He said, now, Mark, you got to try again. Yeah. Barnabas got a hold of him. He said, now, Mark, you failed. But now, look, you got to try again. He was an encourager, remember. And so he encouraged him to try again. And after a while, why, Paul heard about it, and he said that he wrote to Barnabas, and he said, uh, bring Mark with you. He's a help to me. And the revival, why, Barnabas got a hold of this young fellow that failed and encouraged him. And we've got the gospel of Mark because Barnabas got a hold of him. And encouraged him. And God is a God of patience and encouragement, and he wants us to be that way with each other rather than criticize and pick apart. Encourage that man that's failed. Get a hold of him and encourage him. Maybe you can bring him back. It may be another John Mark to write something that will bless others. Barnabas, get Mark and bring him back. And uh, he's a help to me. Mark might have been thrown on the ash heap if it hadn't been for Barnabas coming along and encouraging him and saying, Now, Mark, you got to try again. Barnabas gave money and brought people together and gave them a second chance. And the Bible says that God is the God of consolation or encouragement. And he wants us to be the same way, to encourage one another. And if there's nobody to encourage you, uh, then be like David. Remember when he went out to battle with some of the enemy and, uh, or, and he was fleeing from Saul? And uh, when they left their place, their wives and families and all out fighting the enemy, some of the enemy came in and took their wives and destroyed their place where they were living and came back. And I'll tell you, the men that were with David wanted to, wanted to stone him. 
But it says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. If you can't do anything else, then encourage yourself. Say, I tell you, God's a God of encouragement. And if nobody else will encourage me, I'll encourage myself. So if you can't get anybody else to say, brother, hang on, be encouraged, try it again. If you can't get anybody else to say it, then you say it to yourself. David did it to himself, and I'm glad that's in there. What a wonderful God we serve. So God, what is God telling us about, the Bible is telling us about God. He's a God of encouragement, a God forgives, a God of patience. He doesn't beat us down. He's always trying to say, son, get up and try it again. This is what God, the kind of a God, what a wonderful God we have. So if we have patience with each other, I know, is there anybody? <laughs> I suppose we've all been a trial to somebody at some time or other in our life. Is there anybody who can stand up and say, I've never been a trial to anybody. I'd like to see you. But patience, God is that way with us. So he wants us to be that way. He gave us the revelation. Abraham never had a revelation like that, but we've had a revelation like that, that this is the way God is, and therefore he wants us to be like he is. And what a difference it'll make. It'll bring oneness so that we can glorify God. What a wonderful God, a God of patience, a God of consolation, a God that's forgiving so that we can receive and then receive one another. We can receive that imperfect brother. I know there a, f <laughs> a few of you are imperfect. The rest of you, though, are all perfect. Come on now. <laughs> Goodness sakes alive. You know that isn't so. So receive one another. You're imperfect. I know that. That brother's imperfect. I know it. But so are you, so receive one another. That's what he's trying to tell us. Receive one another. Have patience, have patience with him. He'll outgrow it. And you might even outgrow your own. <laughs> but have patience with him. While you're trying, let him try. You see what I'll do to help bring us to oneness. To glorify God. The revelation of God is a God of patience and encouragement. Now, you forgive me if I'm getting too humorous here, but I trust we want us to get the point on it. So God wants us to do that. Isaiah, uh, here, is, or is, where is this? Looking at another verse here, that uh, God is a God of hope to fill us with all joy and believing. If we'll believe what he says, just believe the word of God. That God, we can be, fill our hearts full of love and joy and peace because we serve such a wonderful, marvelous God. Let's be like God. Let's try it. Anyhow, try it again if you fail. Try it again. <laughs>